Why do my embroidery designs always have gaps between them? This is because of something called push and pull compensation. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly set them up to create perfect designs. Be sure to watch until the end to learn all the best tricks. There's two things that I've said throughout my career. One is the proof is in the stitching. And the other one is what you see on screen and what you get when it sews out aren't always the same. So I'm going to use this example of a very simple maple leaf design and I'm going to give you a couple of different options with how I created the values within it and where I got gapping and overlapping within the designs based on push and pull compensation. And I think this will give you the easiest visual reference to understand why these things are happening and then we'll show you how to do it properly or the old school way because the theory of stitches remains the same. You're always going to have pull in the direction of the stitch and it's going to push on any open ends. Now in this first example is something that I'm sure you've seen over and over again within many designs that may not have been created or digitized properly and that's where you get a bit of separation between two stitched objects. Right here you can see that I have a little bit of gray showing through on the one side of this actual design and I can see that it's doing the same thing over here and it's doing the same thing down here. And that is actually gapping, which means that there isn't enough pull compensation within the way that design was created. Now I did this as an example, just so you could see it. And I'm gonna grab the first object here, which is the fill stitch. And the fill stitch actually has no pull compensation on it. The software does have automation built in where you can set pull comp. Many software will do it based on the fabric type or recipe that you've chosen. And that usually ranges between 0.2 millimeters to 0.4 millimeters of exaggeration on the direction of the stitch. So if it's horizontal, it will exaggerate the stitches a little bit on either end. But I made sure that I totally turned that off for this example. Then I have my second color, which is just the stitch around the outside. It's this satin border. And that is using what's called a steel stitch, which is a fixed width stitch. So it's a two millimeter stitch all the way around. And what I did was I set the inset value to zero so that where these two stitches actually meet, right in between the two, there is no overlapping. And that's why we're getting the separation on those designs is because they are just touching perfectly. And because of the nature of embroidery, which is a top thread and a bobbin thread, they're both pulling tight to make a stitch and you're going to get gapping in those areas. So this is one of the reasons why you would see gapping within your embroidery is because there is no pull compensation on the fill or the other side. And that is, you know, kind of a visual example of what you don't want to see and why it happens. Now, in this example, we went to the other extreme. And as you can see now, we have red thread that's popping outside of the borders. And the way we achieve that is we had the same fill put down so that that uh, red fill is still in the same place that the original design we looked at is. But on the outline the yellow satin stitch I actually used a inset value of 100%. So what it's done is it has literally matched up to the line. So if I look at this right now and if if I were to take this color and I'm going to actually move it up in the order and let's just get rid of this one. So I'll just grab that one color and I'll move it up to run first. You're going to see that that fill completely covers the stitch that is supposed to go around it because I switched the order. If I move that back down in the order that it should be, you're going to see that now it shows up, but there is absolutely no, I guess, consideration of how it's going to push. So the first example was the extreme of how it pulled and left gaps. And the second example is the extreme of how it pushes and it can actually have the red stitching falling outside of the border. So there has to be a happy medium that takes place so that neither of those two happen. So if zero was too little and 100 was too much, then it logically makes sense that 50 should be perfect. So this is the design at 50% inset value, which means that it is going to travel 50% around 
the fill that you will have that inset that's going to be right on the line and if I do look at this in 3D I can see that it is covering everything nicely and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to move the order of the stitch so that it's going to run first and you're going to see that there is about half of the stitches showing now when we look at the fill that is covering the yellow that should be going second. So I'll reverse that order and in the sample we did have everything lined up pretty much perfectly all the way around. Now here's the thing, this still is in my opinion not 100% perfect because having it 50-50 under certain circumstances, I'm talking about very stretchy fabrics. If you're dealing with, you know, serpa fleece or terry cloth, then you might need to go back to the old school method of manually exaggerating your push and pulls while you're digitizing your fills. This actually turned out well. I, I know it will stitch out okay, but it could, depending on the application, still have results that I might not be happy with. So rather than just have this design exactly in the middle, I'm going to take this object and I'm going to get rid of just that fill stitch and I'll delete it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually digitize the red fill the old school way where depending on the direction or the angle of the fill, I'm going to manually adjust my push and pull. And that way I know that whatever application I run it on, I will always get perfect results. So it is an extra step. You do have to manually create your objects. If you change the angle, you'd have to fix it and, you know, redefine it's almost faster to redigitize it than to try to edit it but still it is the proper way to do it so let me show you that right now if your designs keep stitching out wrong it's not your fault 90% of embroidery success comes down to how the design was made and no one teaches that that's why we created the free 101 course that shows you exactly what's happening under the needle click the link in the description to watch it free and grab your bonus cheat sheet for better embroidery results now as I mentioned I'm going to manually digitize this and I'm going to have my horizontal fill direction just like I had in the other examples. So I just pulled down a little guideline so you could see that I do want this to be horizontal. Now I'm going to zoom in and I could either zoom in at 300 or 600%. I'm going to go at 600 just so you can really see what I'm doing and then I'm going to come right into this object and I'm going to start to digitize my lines. Now I'm going to turn the 3D off and see if that is a little bit better for you to view because I'm going to be doing a red stitch so I'm going to choose number three. I'm going to be choosing a fill and I'm going to then put my first point down and I'm not going to bring it halfway like it was kind of done originally. I'm going to come right here and the first point is going to be there. Then I'm going to come here and I am exaggerating this line past 50%. Then I'm going to come here and I'm going to start to go down. And as I went down, you can see that I've come down further than the 50 and then I'm going to come back up a little further out and then I'm going to come over and exaggerate it then I can just pan down here this is going to be exaggerated all the way to there and then I'm coming all the way in like this and kind of exaggerating my points based on push and pull so it's not right in the center of the object I'm kind of you know manually creating this and creating a little bit of pull compensation, but always coming across, this is the open end of that stitch direction. So I'm gonna come straight across here, over exaggerate to this side, and I'll just continue to follow around. This one's kind of coming to here, and you do kind of get used to this after a while. It does take a little while if you're a new digitizer to train your brain to see things with regards to push and pull, based on the direction of the stitch. If my stitch direction was going at a completely different angle, then my approach would completely change as to where I'm putting my points down. So this one's gonna go all the way down to the bottom here, but I'm not gonna come halfway. I'm just gonna come across like that, and I'm adjusting for my push, and I'm adjusting for my pull, both at the same time. Same thing here, come straight up. I'll come around there to here, come straight over to here, exaggerate on the other side, and then continue to go around, and then I'll come over here. I can go all the way up over to this side, 
and as again just kind of it's it's a feel that after a while you kind of get used to you know how much you need to exaggerate how much you need to you know pull down again open end so I'm not coming right up to the center I'm coming right to about here and then I'm gonna to go to here and again coming down going out so I'm really kind of like, imagine, you know, that whole toothpaste scenario where it's going to squeeze in the direction of the stitch and it's going to push out on the open ends. So I really want to make sure that I take that into account as I'm creating all of these objects. So I'm just, I'm going pretty slow right now so you can kind of get a, an idea of how I would do this manually. Coming straight across now, then coming here, going a little past the center point, coming out further from the center point, and I'm right back to the top, and then I'm gonna end all the way across from where I started, so that'll be my last point right there. Hit the enter, and then I know that my stitch direction needs to be perfectly horizontal, so I'll just place that down just like that. That's nice and perfect right there. Then hit the start and the stop, and boom, it's done. So when I look at this now on screen, I'm just gonna zoom out a bit, and I'm going to move this up right here. I can get rid of that baseline if I wanted to, but if we take this right now and I turn the 3D on, you're gonna see a difference. I've adjusted for the push and the pull, and it looks pretty symmetrical on both sides, and now when I move this object, up underneath of this one, it looks the same as the one that had the 50%, but I have adjusted manually for it. So this is old school digitizing. This, in my opinion, is what you would really want to see in a design. I love the automation. I got to be honest, it's a lot faster to just hit a inset value of 50 and cross my fingers and hope that it's going to be perfect. But when you end up sewing it on, you know, a really loose knit fabric and it doesn't turn out, that's when the problems occur. occur. So I'd rather think ahead a little bit take a little more time do it properly and then I'm always guaranteed perfect results if you're excited to start creating your own designs you'll love the embroidery legacy software it's powerful beginner friendly and built to make digitizing faster and easier than ever before and with our expert training you won't be doing it alone click the link in the description to get started and take your next step in your embroidery journey